I first got interested in Olaplex, that's the hair treatment that claims to repair damaged hair and get rid of frizzies, because of the ingenious chemistry involved. Hair is made of a protein called keratin, and one of the amino acids in this protein, namely cysteine, is particularly important for determining the hair structure and its condition. Cysteine molecules in adjacent protein strands forge bonds with each other using the sulfur atoms they contain. The extent of these sulfur-sulfur bridges determines whether hair is curly or straight. <clears throat> Getting a permanent involves first using a chemical, commonly sodium thioglycolate, to break the sulfur-sulfur bonds, <clears throat> then rolling hair around curlers before applying hydrogen peroxide to reform the sulfur-sulfur bonds that will then hold the hair in its new shape. The sulfur-sulfur bonds in keratin can also break due to wear and tear, and hair undergoes wear and tear all the time. Whether it's drying or dyeing or shampooing or sun exposure, all of these can result in broken sulfur-sulfur bonds and leave the hair in poor condition. Olaplex's active ingredient, bisaminopropyl diglycol dimaliate, forms a link between the detached sulfur atoms repairing the hair and allowing it to be shaped without resorting to a permanent. <clears throat> there are numerous reports from consumers who are very happy with the product, and they post impressive before and after pictures. But there are also posts of a different variety. <clears throat> Women who claim that Olaplex burned their scalp, fried their hair, triggered skin rashes, resulted in broken hairs, and caused hair loss. The company denies that there is a risk and claims that the Human Repeat Insult Patch Test, HRIPT, has not revealed any problem. And this is the industry standard human clinical test for topical personal care and pharmaceutical products to see whether or not there's any potential irritation or sensitization of tissues. That doesn't let Olaplex off the hook. A negative HRIPT test gives information about the likelihood of skin irritation, but says nothing about hair loss or damaged hair. At this point, it is not possible to come to conclusion about any risk that Olaplex may pose. <clears throat> there certainly are pictures on the web that show adverse reactions and damaged hair, but of course the reliability of any photos found on the web is uncertain. That being said, though, there seem to be enough reports of such reactions to preclude total dismissal. Exposure to any substance, be it a food, a cosmetic, a cleaning agent, medication, or some environmental pollutant can cause a nasty reaction in some people. That brings up several questions. Is the reaction due to the suspect substance, or can some other factor be involved? For example, a condition called alopecia areata can cause splotchy hair loss, and if this coincides with the use of a product, it may get blamed. Then there's the question of the frequency of an adverse reaction. Are we looking at a handful among millions of users, or is the percentage significant? With Olaplex, there's just not enough information to know. But I do believe that some people have a reaction. I think it's rare. Reaction to what? <clears throat> maybe to the bisaminopropyl diglycol dimaliate, or maybe one of the numerous other ingredients in the product. Unfortunately, the only thing I can say conclusively about Olaplex is that its chemistry is interesting. And that for today is our Cup of Joe.